Hello everyone. Today we are going to take a look at uh, the service catalog within Kingston. And before I do that, I forgot to say that my name is Goran Lankvist and I really love working with ServiceNow. And what we see today is the Kingston release. And before we go into the service portal, we need to know that some of these widgets needs to be activated unless you have a Kingston release out of the box. So just to show you before we start looking at it is that we have some catalog. What does it mean? Catalog. And here we go. This plugin here, we need to activate that one to get all of the widgets. Some of the widgets will still be there, but for four different ones, that are called, and I can show you on the docs. And if we hit Kingston, or we rather do like this, Kingston, Kingston's ITS, uh, where we got that one, there we go. And we hit the service catalog and release notes. Here we go. These four widgets, you need to activate the plugin, just like it says here, unless you have a, a seed booted Kingston release. And to show you how it looks like, let's duplicate and hit the portal. What really happened is that the, the first page has been redone in, in Kingston, as you can see. You have my requests which is the request and approvals widget. You have the, the saved bundles, and you have this one here called my recent and popular items. So in my eyes, this looks a little bit better. Uh, you can search, and the search is just like the normal one or the old one. But the widget itself is the new one called this one, since they have this one as well. And it, kind of looks like the, the knowledge portal where you have the knowledge bases below. But if I search on desktop, it's still the old one. And if I browse by categories, you get the old one as well. What you can see here is that they have kind of redefined it a little bit. So from here, you can choose the card view, the old view, or a green view, which might be a little better. If we click on hardware, which have subcategories, you can see show more, and you can see going to Windows tablets and so on. So that part looks, looks pretty cool. The last thing of those four here is the scroll to top, which is only working on if you have a mobile perhaps or a really little uh, tablet. But what it does is, if we go to the first page, because I don't have that many data on the other pages where it exists, so let's design this one. And let's catch that widget, and it's loaded. <sighs> Scroll to top, and we put it somewhere. So if we go back to this one, and we make the screen a little bit smaller. Like this. And if we scroll down, and when we start to scroll up, we see the little bottom here, you can press that one to scroll to the top. So that is the new one. And it will only out of the box, it only show if you start scrolling up again. When I scroll down, it's disappearing. Scrolling up, it's showing. And perhaps that's not the best with it, but at least you can take that technology and use it for some other stuff that might be even cooler. But let's go here and delete it. So that was a few, or that was the four new ones here. But if we go back to widgets instead, and I sorted and updated, there's a few of my own I just playing around with. But as well, you can see that someone has been added as deprecated. 
And if you can see SC catalog, you can see there are two of those. And on the ID, you can see that this is called version two. Meaning that if you get an older portal and you right click, control right click on one, like we have here, it will probably say uh, deprecated because you're using the old version. So you can replace that one. And to show you the difference is if we go to an item, what they have done now is they have removed the sub submit button and instead put it up here instead where you can do these kinds of stuff instead. Uh, they have also moved their required field. So it was kind of hard to find uh, demo data with some mandatory fields. So I found something called role delegation. Come on. What's something with role? Do, 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 do. Let's go to service catalog. Okay, let's find this the old, come on, I order something. And I clicked, it's not here. Browse, role delegation, and this one. Here you can see it's kind of not so good looking with the blue bars on top and the bottom, but they moved that up here as well. And when I found out kind of a bigger with a lot of variables, this one will still always be here. So even if I scroll down, it will be visible, which is kind of good. Kind of looking at my notes so I don't forget something. Mm, exactly. What you might notice as well is that if you look at the current order, a request, to change the look of it. Now there's a widget called SC order status. It pretty much looks like the, the native UI when you place an order. So from now on, if you're using this widget, you can't, you don't have the conversation through the requested item, but you have to click on the, or, or through the request. The requested item still has the, the old one where you can see and you can type messages and so on. Uh, I think this is kind of good looking as well. If I take a request where I did some more ordering, it looks like this. And they still have the drop downs and so on. So I really like the new way of looking at our order instead of the old one where you had the widgets or the requ requested item out to the right. Another thing that really made a lot nicer is the new hire the order guides. So it's not the new hire you made, but the order guides, it looks like. And the same here, it pretty much looks like the, the native one instead, where you have the needs, where you can set up the order guide variables. So let's just select something. Uh, hitting next, you get the items. From here, you can see all items. You can see this one has an item with a variable that is mandatory. Click on that one to expand it. Also, if they say, okay, they don't need an external monitor, you can just remove that one. And let's fill in some. We hit the next. Here you can see a summary. We can go back by hitting the edit options, or we can hit the edit now. And order now, you can see the new kind of good looking fields where I actually can change who I'm requesting it for. From here, I can search, choose, change the delivery options and so on. So let's check that one out. And that was pretty much a new thing about the requester form which is kind of cool because if we go, and I know a lot of clients that wanted to have the ability to order stuff for someone else. And before you have to really have to go through the, the car to do that, to get that field. But now if I go to a, a Google phone, for example, I hit the order now, the same button pops up. So that's really nice new feature for the service catalog. 
one thing I forgot to mention about in the, the order guide is that if you go in here, you can see, let's fill it up, do, 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 next. What you can see now is that each item had their own attachment. So if you want to attach something that should go only to the stand lapper, you can do it through here as well, which is really nice. What's good to know as well is there is a, a a total bunch of uh, properties. So if I go to the catalog and hit the uh, properties, you can also see in the Kingston they had a new better looking way of categorizing the different properties. So if we go to cart, we actually have a field down here. And I noted that this property actually exists with before Kingston as well. Username and email, which pretty much means that if I order something, and when I search with people, you can see that I got the username and email address. So from here, I can set out of the box is empty, meaning it will only give you, wonder if it's working already. It will only give you the name, which is kind of often in, in places where people is the same name like five times and you have to try to figure out which one is which. You always want to add something to see the identity of the person so you can choose the right one. Do, do, do. And of course, not everyone is supposed to be able to order for everyone else. Out of the box, there is a field for that, which is empty and it's this one. So it means everyone can do it. Just to show you, if I put admin here and let's uh, just to truly show you, I'm going to log in as able. There we go, and here you go. I hate when that happens. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go, let's order something, and let's hit the iPad then. And if able press order now, when it's loaded, you can see that the field is gray instead. So he can't change it. He can change these two, but not the requested form. So let's remove that one. I also found another pretty cool property, but it didn't seem to work, but uh, Let's see, it's about approving. Yeah, exactly this one. Show the current pending approver's name in the stage with the mouse over. Which in my eyes is if I go to uh, something I Okay, this one has been approved. Let's order something a little bit more expensive. Let's order some iPads and let's order like 10 of them. My hope was that that little property would actually, when I hoover of this one, I would see who am I waiting for, for approval? But not really. So hopefully there's a bug for that one. I think I'm going to throw it into high house to see what they're going to say, but it will be nice if that will be out of the box instead. 
So, but I totally recommend going through the different properties, but because a few of the questions from the community actually is doable just through a portal property instead. Do, do, do. I think that's about it, what I found about in the service catalog for the portal. So I hope it will help you in your way in building your own portal and hopefully really want to go over to Kingston when it's released for the public. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.